And what kind of blood do the umbilical arteries carry? Deoxygenated. Deoxygenated. You notice something? Artist blood. Okay. The two are the arteries, they should be blue, and the one is the vein, bringing oxygenated blood back to the baby. It should be red. Okay. So there's, there's an error in color on that one. Okay. have our chart on the lymphatic system. And looking at the big picture here, okay, it, it shows several specific things that you know we just kind of introduced and talked about today. First off, the the lymphatic return is in two specific separate areas. Okay? Uh, here we have the right half of the of the chest the thorax, right half of the thorax, uh, right half of the head, and the right upper limb, all returns in one unit that goes into here, the right subclavian vein. All the rest of your lymphatic return from the lower limbs, from the abdominal region, from the left side of the thorax, and the left upper limb, and the left side of the head, all of that is a common return into the left subclavian vein. Okay. We see here some uh, various features. We see a group of, of axillary nodes. We see a group of inguinal nodes. Okay. We see superficial lymph vessels and deep lymph vessels. Um, they feed into <coughs> Okay, and it doesn't show here, but it does show how the deep vessels wind around the arteries so they get some pumping help. Okay, but if we move over to the central figure here on the thorax and look at it, there is a main thoracic duct that comes right up the center and goes into the left subclavian. That's this guy here. And there's your cisterna chile. There's where uh, <clears throat> much of your lymphatic uh, material enters that thoracic duct and the material carried by the lymph um, vessels is called chyle. And so the cisterna chyle means a holder of chyle. Okay? And that chyle is going to be the fatty material that's being carried away from, from the digestive system and so on. Okay? Um, let me raise this up. And hopefully that works about right to look at this lymph node here. And this gives a, a good view of what I was trying to show on the board today in, in lecture, where the afferent vessels are bringing uh, the fluid in, goes through the cortex where the T cells are and the germinal centers, so the T cells can make, uh, uh, can identify the foreign invaders, and the B cells can make antibodies against them, and then down here in the medulla, the macrophages can eat them, and the cleaned lymph comes out in the efferent vessels. Okay. You want to look here at the section of the head because in the in the lymphoid tissues, something that's really important are those things we call tonsils. And yeah, some of us don't have them as of a couple weeks ago, huh? Yeah. Uh, but we have tonsils here. These are the ones that you see looking straight into the mouth, and, and in a moment we'll pan over and take a look at that. Uh, but these are your palatine tonsils. You have two of them, one on each side of the back of your mouth, back of your oral cavity, if we get technical. Then here on the back of the tongue is the lingual tonsil. Up high here is where the, the pharyngeal uh, tonsil uh, the one that becomes the adenoid that makes it tough to breathe because it'll block up this air passage, see, throughout the nasal cavity. And then right around the opening to the eustachian tube, right in there, is another little mass of uh, tonsil type uh, material, of lymphoid material, which is the tubal tonsil. See, if we drop down to here, this is a great view. Okay. We're looking at the back of the oral cavity. This guy's been sliced, and you're looking in from the rear, okay, 
And, and that is the lingual tonsil on the back of the tongue, partially hidden by the uvula, that little thing that hangs down at the back of your throat. And then that bump here and here is your uh, palatine tonsil. Okay, so if we kind of pan over this way up to this open mouth, okay, this is mom's view, right? And Well, almost. Mom doesn't cut the lips like this. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, we hope not. Yeah. But this, sometimes you want to. <laughs> Parents understand. Okay? But, but you're looking into the mouth here, and there's your uvula and that tongue, and there's the tonsil there, and there are the palatine tonsils. Okay? A, uh, in, enlarged uh, heart here, almost as big as the one in our cadaver. Uh, this would be really cardiomegaly. Uh, but this shows some rather nice details, and I'll just kind of highlight them and ask you questions and stuff. The vessel is? Aorta. Aorta. Vessel is? Pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary trunk. Why are they connected by this thing? What's this? Ligamentous arteriosus. Ligamentum arteriosum. Ligamentum arteriosum, yeah. Uh, okay, the, not a fetus. In the Latin, it's all supposed to, to, I was going to say it's supposed to rhyme, but the, the tense is supposed to, or a case or something supposed to match. Yeah. Okay, uh, what did the ligamentum arteriosum used to be? Ductus arterios. Sus. 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 Yeah. It's supposed to rhyme. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this structure? Right. Article. Which? Oh, Left atrium with the Article. Article. And this is the right atrium with the Article. Okay? And um, when we look at the aorta, okay, we can take the front off of this, okay? And we can see how the aorta has the first very two branches coming off of it. Watch this one. Left coronary artery, yep. And this one? The right coronary artery. Some important landmarks on this model. This green patch right here. That is the? Coronary or no? No. What? This green patch right here. This green patch. SA node. It represents oh. the SA node, the sinoatrial node. What's important about that? Do we care about it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, what is it? The action potential. It's the pacemaker. This is where the action potentials normally begin in a healthy heart. Okay. Well, why is there a green spot in here? What's this? The AV node. The AV node. Uh, what's it do? Okay, it's a backup, yeah, but that's not its continual function. It, it sends the impulses down. It sends the impulses down to the ventricles. What does it do to the impulses when it sends them down? Depolarize. Well, the impulses are depolarizations, but what's it do to them? It does send them down the bundle of his, but what's it do to them? Yes! Good, Kelly. It delays them. We have a tenth of a second delay so that there is an appropriate timing between the atrial contraction and the ventricular contraction. Okay? And so it sends the impulse down, and this portion here is the bundle of hiss, and then it comes apart into these two outlined areas, which are the what? Bundle branches. Bundle branches, and then it comes up the lateral surfaces, which is the? Perkinji. Perkinji fibers that we looked at earlier. Okay? Uh, identify the valve, the aortic semilunar valve, okay? It's coming out of what chamber? Left ventricle. Identify the structure, papillary muscle, okay? Identify these thread-like structures, chordae tendine. Identify the valve, mitral, aka bicuspid.